listening to Loving BDSM Podcast, Episode 30. Hey everybody, Kayla Lords here with Guess Who? John Brownstone! Hi! Today, we're tackling one of the biggest topics, not just in BDSM, but in all things sexual, consent. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the Loving BDSM Podcast. If this is your first time listening, glad to have you. If you're back for another week, welcome back. Loving BDSM is produced every Friday for your kinky pleasure and education, and show notes are found at kaylalords.com. Come back often and feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. If you love what you hear, we'd love a good review on iTunes to help other kinksters find us. You can follow me on Twitter at Kayla Lords or stalk John Brownstone at southernsirsplace.com. All links are in the show notes. Just a reminder that I am on Patreon looking for kinky patrons to help me keep the podcast and my writing going. Anyone who can and wants to show their love can make a monthly pledge for as little as a dollar a month. Go a little higher and you get perks, including monthly videos of me talking about kink, sex, writing, you name it. Your support will help me upgrade the equipment I use for the podcast, have more time to create more and better episodes, and even make the podcast ad-free. You can stop at any time, and no worries. If you just can't afford to do it or it's not your thing, we still love you for listening each week. Okay, real quick, before we get into the actual show, there's something I need to do. Okay, so several days ago, am I right about that? Okay, Mm -hmm. Daddy got a very kind message on Tumblr from a listener who said some really sweet things about how much they love the show and, you know, that I say things that are remotely helpful. And (laughs) they happened to say something that made me laugh out loud and for me to laugh out loud I there's no chuckle there's no giggle it's like a cackle like throw my head back and like open that's, mouth that's true folks it, it's unique. it's a huge laugh anyway it, but it was a good laugh I wasn't laughing at that person I was just completely amused so um apparently some of y'all out there really love my accent and I'm not gonna g- say anymore what accent I know there's an accent it's okay <laughs> I own it it's fine um but this particular listener really loved it when I said a certain word so I'm really hoping they decided that episode 30 was an episode to listen to um because for that person and anybody else who apparently appreciates my accent and maybe specific words I might say I just have one thing to say and for me to you especially that one listener i just want to say fuck i don't know what's funny about that but apparently he really likes it she he she she really likes it so fuckity fuck fuck mcfuckerson there (laughs) do you feel better now i feel a lot better i was a little like tense before starting the show and i'm feeling a little bit better now i should just say fuck more often fuck 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 i can make a song out of it but nobody wants to hear me sing hey (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Do y'all hear this? This is what I live with. Anyway, anyway, let's. Uh, this show is actually going to be a little serious today, and I'm. I say it's serious because it is a serious topic. But I know us. Oh yeah. It probably won't be that serious, y'all. It, I apologize. It, it can now. degrade in a, in an instant. Oh yeah. So this week's show is about consent. Correct. And some of it's going to be pretty basic. I mean, mm-hmm. I would hope that most mm-hmm. of y'all listening, if you're listening to a show about BDSM, you already have basic concepts of consent, but it's always good to talk about again. Right. Um, because I think sometimes we forget. We go, oh, consent. They said yes. Okay, I got consent. And mm-hmm. sometimes it's more than that. Um, and right. then the other thing I kind of want to... Like, I feel like I need to give a disclaimer. That was the word I wanted. Ah, yeah. I'm, I'm not all here today, so words are hard. Um... I normally script out episodes, and so I th- I script it out so I know what I'm what's going to be said beforehand, and then I throw in stories and rants and rambles. Y'all have heard those before, um, <laughs> and something about doing the show with Daddy scripts never work for us because see what will happen is we'll have a script and we'll practice it before we hit record, and the mm-hmm. practice one will be awesome right. we'll be completely off the cuff we'll be completely honest we'll make some really great points and then when we go to hit record we forget that we were going to say any of that exactly so, we, so we're just going to play it off the cuff we are winging it today and i That's am right. so sorry no to my type a ocd friends out there you know how hard this is for me um but it's important and we do just want to have sort of a conversation because i think that there's a lot of perspectives on consent in general True. whether you're dom sub not kinky kinky whatever mm-hmm. and then i think within a relationship as a dominant and submissive i think there's probably a certain view on consent that changes adapts develops over time and even from different That's perspectives mm-hmm. okay because let me 
put it this way, y'all. I'm his submissive. We're 24 seven. I say I consent to everything. I say he can do whatever he wants. But damn, if I'm really not feeling good, I'm sort of s still sitting there hoping right. that he doesn't want something. <laughs> well, so consent you know, just, gets a little wonky. It, after it a while. does. And and actually, this this topic today is um, what was uh, brought to to my mind uh, to to talk about a little bit. Uh, by by the same Tumblr follower. Uh, matter of fact, she she gave me permission to mention her name. Her her Tumblr name is Ruth K. Everybody, go follow her. Yeah, one wonderful wonderful blog on Tumblr, and um, wonderful person too. And and she had asked me a a question uh, about consent. And basically, what it was was can can consent be. Um, Im implied by by someone who is drunk. Ooh, yeah. Uh, I mm. and and I mean this this is something that that can go either way, whether from the BDSM world or even into the vanilla world. Definitely in the uh, vanilla okay. world. Okay, people get in um, a lot of trouble all the time from ab drunk absolutely. sex and absolutely. consensual issues later. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I at, at that time I I replied back to her and uh, and I told her, you know, if, if someone is is inebriated. Uh, that they're drunk, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, in in no way, shape, or form can can consent be taken. Not really. Not if you follow informed consent. Correct. And and we will we will get to that in Correct. a little bit. I definitely want to talk about that. I, I mean, you know, if if you are um, inebriated, I mean, let's face it, we've all been there. We've all done it. We've had a few drinks too many. Um, which you know is is nothing fine. Wrong with that, yeah. Nothing, e nothing. If wrong everybody's with that. legal, that's uh, fine. Well, that's true. And you're not that's driving. True. Please, do please, not. Please, please be legal and don't drive when Thank when you, you have a few too many. Thank take you. take a taxi. You know, we we really want you back next week to listen to us <laughs> right. again. Uber okay. is your friend, y'all. Yeah, Uber is yeah. your friend. But um, you know, when when you've had had a few, uh, you know, to, in my mind, even a few drinks. Um, you know, I, I think consent can get a little wonky at that point, whether it be sexual, whether it be for a scene. Um, you know, it, think about how. I mean, I'm I'm not a big drinker, and it's been many years since I was actually drunk off my ass. But I promise you, anything that I thought sounded like a real good time while I was drunk, when I thought about it the next day when I was sober, it didn't really wasn't really <laughs> it didn't all that seem good. Like a good idea. No, no, so no, no. if you're thinking, oh sure, I can consent to kinky play while I'm drunk, well, mm -hmm. you know, everybody's unique and everybody's an individual, and I get that. And your threshold is different from from my threshold. And I would say to John Brownstone, I would say, okay, you get me drunk tonight, and yeah, I'm I'm telling you right now, I consent. We're cool because. I would like to think even in a moment of inebriation I could still scream mm -hmm. out red if it got really bad but what if I yeah. couldn't and that's a that's a what if that I don't think anybody really should mm, right. play with and and here's the thing too if 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 we've been drinking especially you know me like she said she may give consent beforehand but you know what 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 if at that point you have just a few too many and and you're really over the edge I, I mean you know as as the person who takes care of you, okay, I need to have enough judgment to know, hey, this is not a, a good place to be to do this. Right, that what you really need to do is to take my drink away, take me off of the table, make me pull my shirt back down, and then tuck me into bed. Well, maybe not the shirt back down, but you know. Yeah, and yeah, kind of hmm. cover the girls. Okay, so <laughs> that's what started this, and it's kind of cool when my daddy Dom, who supports the endeavor of the podcast, but does not get to participate as much as I would like. Yeah, I'm. So, I'm. I'm. It, it's kind of nice to be out from behind. I'm. The, don't look behind the curtain because right. I am doing the all the technical things. He's the man behind the curtain. Things. Right. He's. The he's my tech guy. Um, <laughs> but when he looked at me and said, "We really need to talk about consent. Have you talked about consent? No, I don't think I've talked about. And if, if some, if I've talked about consent, I know we have not talked about it like we're talking about it today. So mm -hmm. that's what started it. Really, don't worry. I will totally link on the show notes page to that person's Tumblr page. So, you know, shameless promotion. Everybody, go follow her. Go, you know, tell her thank you for getting me to say fuck. However many times <laughs> I end up saying it in this episode. Um, but let's start from the beginning about what consent is. And I know that most people go, okay. They said yes. They said yes. I will do this. But that's not. That's not that, all. That's of consent. not all of consent. Right. Um, you know, if you're talking about consent, let, let's say, um, as a bottom, 
you're negotiating a scene with a top. Okay. Um, okay, yes, I consent to this scene. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. You may want a spanking, but in the course of that spanking, he has not touched your breast. True. Okay. So, you know, there, there, there are very or finite things within that. You, I am consent to the spanking, but only with a hand and a paddle, not a belt and flogger. Correct. Not a, a, a whip, not, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it's one thing to say, yes, I want to do that, but what does that mean? And, and the term that I have written about before, and I'll link to it in the show notes too, um, that was brought to our attention from a master that we met in, in our, not local area, but sort of our regional area, mm -hmm. is when he talked about informed consent. And some yeah. people will say that informed consent takes all the fun and sexiness out of it. Okay, uh... No. If you have to be vague and not share with your partner your plans, I already find that not sexy, okay? <laughs> um, because while I don't know how hard the paddle's going to land on my ass, I do get to know that the pa paddle is going to land on my ass. I don't know how many times it's going to land. That's true. I don't know what the pattern is. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he's going to whisper in my ear first. I don't know. There's a, a lot of variables you don't know in a scene right. like that, but I'm going to know mm -hmm. that it's a paddle. And right. that is part of informed consent. Now, the other part that I found fascinating, I didn't find fascinating. It made sense because it's something you and I do, but I found comforting. That's the word I don't see. Words okay. are hard today. Mm -hmm that he said this, that it's not just you and I and we're, you know, our OCD type A selves. Correct. It was like, no, informed consent means taking that instrument of ass destruction or whatever it may be <laughs> yeah. and letting the other person feel it in a non-kinky, non-seen way against right. their skin. That is how you can say, oh, sure, you can flog me because I kind of know what that felt like on my arm or right. I know what it felt like on my leg. So, mm -hmm. sure, we'll try it on my back or my ass or And, and that's something I've done with you with every one every of our toy. toys. Every, every toy. Every um, mm -hmm. You know, but before I grabbed a flogger and started flailing you. Hmm. <laughs> can we do that tonight? <laughs> um, hmm. It has been a while. I know, and he has purple rope he hasn't tried out. Just That's a true. Aside That's true. Anyway. Anyway, um, you know, what What was the first thing I, I did with any of those toys? I, I showed them to you. Mm -hmm. um, I let you hold them, touch them, feel them. Um, not in a, a um, scene-like manner, but I did run it across your body, let you feel what it what what it felt like the the texture you know everything else i even showed you the proper way to use the toy that's true and y'all this is not a real clinical serious we sat down at a big table and the lights were all bright no no no. we're very no. playful i mean we're still like i'm still half naked when this is happening he's right. you know we're getting ourselves geared up to do something exactly and 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 you know the the poor the poor dear thing it had been so through so much and and it is retired now but you know one of the ways that i i, I taught kayla how to use use the flogger and, and even how I learned to use it was through flogging a pillow yes <laughs> poor pillow poor poor pillow um, which just in, in case um, anybody wondered if you're kind of new to playing with things like to actual specific toys and it's not just your hand and it's not just you mm -hmm. know pulling hair and whatever and that and that's always a good place to start um, part of informed consent is knowing that the person who's wielding that thing on your body that could will cause some sort of sensation it's not all pain i mean we play with a lot of pain but it's right. not all pain but it is sensation right is that they know you can how make a to use feel that good too. oh yes you can it's like a massage mm -hmm. but it's that the other person who is telling you that they're going to do this thing to you knows how to do it that is part That's, of consent that too. is absolutely true and 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 taking that even a little further, not not only knowing how to use it, but say he is using it, and and say while the 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 the, the toy may have felt good when you were you know feeling it, um, at some point it may get to be too much, and and part of that consent is you know if you need to safe word that the other that that person will honor that safe word and stop. Right, because consent comes down to trust, y'all. I mean, it really right. does. When you're when you're finding a play partner in a club, you know, in a club or among mm -hmm. your friends or whatever, the trust isn't 
oh, I trust this person with my social security number, like I uh, like I do with daddy. It's the mm-hmm. trust that this person is a responsible kingster. Uh, they're going to do what they say they're going to do. They're not going to do things that they said they weren't going to do. Right. And that if I say red or schmoopsy pants or purple eggplant, yeah. they will stop. Okay? Right. And so consent and trust kind of have to go hand in hand. And let me tell you something. If you are talking to somebody relatively new to you they don't have to be new to the lifestyle they don't have to be new to your personal inner circle but new to you in playing and you get a funny feeling in the pit of your stomach that makes you go "Mm, i'm not sure and and that's top or bottom y'all don't play okay right you take a breather step back you you need to go with that gut instinct always and and i say that you know we talk i especially i talk a lot about from a submissive perspective and protecting submissives um, because hello that's kind of my first that's my thing I hey I'm a submissive (laughs) but I don't doubt that dominance or tops can get that uneasy feeling because I would imagine and I'll let daddy confirm or deny that you have to trust that we will actually say something that we will tell you that we don't like this or absolutely that this and and we don't have health problems you got to be worried about right and 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 that that's another part that comes into it too but, you know, going back a little bit to the um, uh, original um, topic of, of consent, which, which brings, brings up a good point. You know, this, this winter, both, both uh, Kayla and I, um, this, this was a sick winter for both of us. Um, one or the other was sick at one time or another. And and what was really rough about it was that when she was sick, I wasn't sick. When I was sick, she was. We just sort of passed it back we, and we, forth. We, we just kind of passed it back and forth. Oh, I've never washed sheets so much in my yeah, life. <laughs> and, but but anyway, you know, at at the time that I was feeling healthy, you know, I would have loved to play, but you know, <laughs> I I have to look at her and say, you know. No. And here's the thing. This is why this is significant. It's not just that he's a very good human being and a nice man to not make his sick, submissive, you know, <laughs> suck his cock or something. This cock sound as good as fuck. You'll have to let us know. Anyway, um, <laughs> our relationship is such that from the very beginning, I said, as part of our negotiation, I am always sexually available to you whenever sure. you want it. It's yours. Mm -hmm. Now, I could say that because I trust him (laughs) not to come after me when I am puking my guts up. (laughs) Hey, I'm sure that's somebody's kink out there somewhere. All right. Your Um, kink may not be my kink. But but your kink is okay. Yeah. Um, Anyway, uh, you know, when I did feel awful, when I was, you know, when something was just not going to make it fun and sexy. Now, Mm -hmm. he also knows that stress isn't always a good reason not to get kinky because it can, our kinky moments can alleviate that stress. But absolutely. But there, there, there's also a a point where with that, where, you know, um, I have to know, you know, there, there is a certain point with her that when, when she is under a certain amount of stress, if I put her over my knee and I give her one hell of a spanking that her ass is red and bruised, <gasps> it snaps her out of it. And it is wonderful. Okay. <laughs> but there are times when she goes, uh, what I call, over the edge. Okay? <laughs> yes, I and, do. And, and her stress is just like all-consuming and, and, you know, it's, um, it, it's, it's just a downward spiral. Um, in those times, I cannot do that. That would not. That would actually make matters worse. Even okay. though I have consented to that, that he can do right. what he wants to do, feels like doing, right. and desires to do. But, I but, consented to that long ago. Right. But but see, and and this is a little bit of the difference of, of being in a long term relationship and and consent. Okay. Um, you have to use a little common sense. Okay. And I wouldn't you, even call it that, though, no. Daddy. I would not call it common sense. To me, it comes down to the responsibility of the dominant. Just because you want to have something doesn't mean that right. you're supposed to or that you should, should in that moment. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Because I think one, some people would call it common sense, but mm-hmm. we all know that common sense yeah. is not that common. Um, but if for you tops and dominance out there if you take your sense of responsibility very seriously and your first thought is not your own pleasure as important as that Mm -hmm. is and from a submissive perspective i find his his pleasure and his comfort very important his top priority is actually my comfort 
Absolutely. Because if she is not taken care of and, and she is not in, in a state of well-being, whether it's physical, mental, or, or anything else, how could she be available to me to, to give me what and I need? And can I really consent to that? You know, right. I, yeah, I consented two years ago. Yeah. But, but you un- understand, and, and I think this is the big point. Um, regardless of whether you're in a long-term relationship, a new relationship, okay, if alcohol is involved, sure. if someone is sick, Sure. Medication. If you're medicated. Oh, if you're sure. on if you're on pain medication. Yeah, please don't come at okay? me if I'm on pain medication. <laughs> you leave me alone. Promise you I won't. <laughs> but but under under those circumstances, someone may give consent. And see, here's the thing too, as a submissive, and I, I've seen this in Kayla, you know, she will agree to something because she feels it is her place as a submissive to to do that. And 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 it is my responsibility at that point to yay or nay absolutely okay you know i i I mean you know even though she she has given implied consent it doesn't mean that at any given moment i should just just take that i have to weigh you know has she been drinking is she sick is she on any medication and and this goes for anybody you have to use you have to be responsible. Absolutely. And and I will say, I will say, I don't, I don't ever, I'm never comfortable with it being all the dominant's responsibility to make sure everything goes right. I know as my dominant sitting right next to me is like, but that's my responsibility. I, <laughs> I get that. I know. Uh, however, I do believe that submissives have our own sense of responsibility. And the hardest, from my perspective, the hardest part is weighing the desire to make our dominant happy and mm. to please them and to to take care of them because i sometimes you know getting kinky is about you know our mutual pleasure but sometimes it's i want to take care of him and that is a way to take care of him True. we have to weigh that with how we're actually feeling and the responsible thing to do is to especially if maybe there's a distance that's separating you maybe you're not together all the time and your your dominant can't read your body language all the time and can't see what's going on and has to depend mm-hmm. on you telling him or her what is going on in your life you as a submissive have a responsibility to say i am sick i don't feel good i'm freaking out my boss is an asshole and this is the worst day ever 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 i hate life mm-hmm. right now and that way your dominant can then make an informed decision about whether you're going to do anything or not, what methods they need to use to mm-hmm. get you right again, whatever it may be. So, you know, I I think some people listen think we're not really talking about consent anymore. We're talking about communication. And you know what? Consent and communication are two halves two, of the same coin. Exactly. You, you can't have one without the other. You, you have to have communication to have consent. Now, I would like to, because you used an expression a little bit ago that we, I think it's out there, but I, I sort of came up with and we've sort of adopted, implied consent. And mm-hmm. the reason I want to sort of bring this up, and I, I know that this particular couple we know is not completely unique in this. Maybe there's some other people out there listening who feel mm-hmm. this way. I want to explore a topic. And when I say explore, I mean, I really, <laughs> I have an opinion, but I don't think my opinion's the right, necessarily the right one, okay? Yes, that does happen. It's okay. Nobody has to be shocked. <laughs> um, we know a couple. Not touching that one. Yeah. <laughs> I blew him a raspberry in case you weren't sure. Okay. So we know a couple who, um, they are he is dominant she is submissive I, it might even be closer to a slave relationship but mm. not a micromanaged slave relationship um i'm not even they might be 24 7 i believe they live together yes. they live together okay yes so he has made statements and she's backed him up so they're on the same page with this mm-hmm. um several times about how he doesn't have to have her consent he can do what he wants. Mm-hmm. And that, the moment I hear something like that, he's got the hiccups, y'all. The moment <laughs> I hear something like that, it doesn't sit well with me. Well, here's here's the thing. And and I, I understand that. As, as as a dominant and submissive, I don't think it would. I, I think in, in that case, and um, I, I know who you're talking about. They they are a master slave. Okay. Okay. They they are a master slave. That I think you're entering into a whole different and, realm. And I and I think the reason that 
we I can talk about it and not like foam at the mouth and go that's <laughs> awful because I try not to do that. Yeah. It happens. But I try and to, is because we met Master Kate who said his agreement with his slave and he is master slave. True. Um, his slave was so cute. She's his kitten and she's just I just wanted adorable to like, little oh thing. my gosh, so cute. Anyway. <laughs> he said that their agreement from the very beginning that he laid out in no uncertain terms was that by b- staying in the relationship, consent was implied. Correct. But I would, and and while I I am just kind of um, I, I'm I'm kind of stepping here a little bit, reaching maybe. You playing devil's advocate? No. Okay. Darn, no. Darn. So. <laughs> then he just bopped me on the head, y'all. <laughs> what I was going to say is that my guess is that in those relationships, Master Kate, the other one we're talking about, or, or really any master slave, my, my guess would be that prior to the relationship, they sat down and negotiated every little thing to the minutest detail and i really hope so and i think that's the other thing and that's that's a a broader lesson about the lifestyle which i can admit that i i have to be reminded of from time to time when you are at a munch or a coffee time or the club whatever little snippet of a, a kinky couple's life you see is not the end beginning or middle of their life there are aspects that you don't know about them right and so it's you know it's real easy and and i i can say that the particular couple who started me thinking on this whole implied consent thing Mm -hmm. he kind of rubs me the wrong way well um i think i rub him the wrong way so i'm okay with that he he does that to a lot right Uh, i'm sure he's a fine dominant i don't think he'd be kind of allowed into the inner circle if he wasn't it's just our personalities (laughs) clash Mm -hmm. um it's he's have you ever, as a as a submissive, I'm talking to the submissives out there, have you ever met a dominant where you looked at them and went, oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Not in a million years. Yeah, it's like that. Very nice person otherwise. Yeah. Anyway, um, but I, and I think that becomes the, the overarching lesson there is that we don't know what somebody negotiated when mm-hmm. they first started their relationship unless they're willing to talk about it like master right. kate he was very willing to talk about it oh absolutely he talked about something that i had never heard of before and it makes sense in master slave relationships mm-hmm. it could possibly make sense in a very strict ds relationship oh, the mediator he has a mediator yeah, they they have a a neutral um kink, uh, kink mediator right so the so, person knows the lifestyle understands the lifestyle understands yes. both their styles and who they are knows them very intimately right. and and if either one of them has any kind of issue or, or not even issue well yeah okay issue concern issue, concern or something like that they can approach the mediator um speak openly about what their their feelings their their concerns are and and the mediator then broaches is the go between. Is the go between. They, mm-hmm. they they literally that mediator literally mediates between the two of them to to help um, 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 resolve the um, re- issue. resolve the issue. Yes. And I would say in a deep master slave relationship that probably makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, as you can see uh, from listening to Daddy and myself, we're kind of open. Um, I can say pretty much anything i need to say okay mm-hmm. the thing i have with to, respect of course but that's what i was gonna say daddy <laughs> jeez as long as i say it respectfully <laughs> now if he's in a playful mood i can be sassy yes. um sometimes i miss my mark and i'm mm-hmm. sassy when he's not really feeling it mm-hmm. or i my head i think i'm sassy and he would use an awful awful b word that i don't think we need to use today i think it's better to just leave that word alone it's not a nice word i see your your lips are are wanting to make to form to make that word i don't think that's necessary if you really cannot figure out what word that this baby girl could be accused of being called brat stop i was gonna say you could email me and i would ignore you and not tell you um (laughs) I don't like that word. I don't like that word. But 
what I will say, because it does come down to consent, yeah. I don't think you can fully consent unless you fully communicate, okay? Absolutely. And so, for those, for all the messages I get, and I, I don't, I go through dry spells, like I'll go a week mm-hmm. or so, and it's kind of quiet, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm a kinky people, or they're like rocking and rolling out there. And then I, <laughs> I get sort of flooded with like a whole bunch of questions. Mm-hmm. And it always comes down to, he did this, or she did that, and I was afraid to say anything. And that's the problem. You can't, even in a master-slave relationship, you have to have a mechanism built in in so that you can say what you need to say because if you are going along with what's happening whether it's a scene whether it's a sexual moment whether it's a way that your relationship is forming and shaping and tasks that are being assigned and Mm -hmm. expectations that are being had of you if you are going along with that not because you want to be there or you want to have that experience but because you were afraid to say something that contradicted your dominant or your top then I would say, how are you fully consenting? Sure, you're going along with it, but in your mind and heart, you've got reservations, there's problems. And to me, you're not even giving your dominant the ability to really consent because you haven't told your dominant what's going on. Your dominant might make completely different decisions Mm -hmm. if he or she knew what was really going on with you. Right. Now, I do have to say that while I talk a lot about submissive feelings and sharing our feelings and saying what we we feel and um, saying the hard stuff and talking about, you know, when something scares us or something is unpleasant, part of what our our dominance job is, I guess, should they choose to accept Mm -hmm. this part of the job, is to stretch our boundaries. And sometimes we are going to be uncomfortable. And sometimes we're even going to be a little scared, okay? Right. Um, I have cried on more than one occasion because I was asked to, you know, go talk to strangers um, because that Mm -hmm. is scary to me. (laughs) I consented to it because my rational thinking brain said, he's right. This is actually good for me. Okay. That's true. So, consent you is... Do. You need to get out more and be I around know, people. I know, but uh, people. Yeah. Um, can I just talk to them through the computer? That'd be great. I like talking to you guys. <laughs> this is easy. I can do this. Um, you want to know what's crazy? In a former vanilla life, I spoke publicly. I got up in front... Not big humongo groups. Not like 200 people. But if groups of 50 to 75 people at a max, and I spoke... and fairly confidently and people thought I was I knew what I was talking about I didn't tell them my knees were shaking and they couldn't see that part <laughs> anyway, I have totally digressed hidden, hidden behind the podium anyway my point is yeah. is that I think it goes back to my point is that consent is way more than a yes or no absolutely consent is way more than hey I want to smack your ass will you let me sure right. sometimes it is y'all mm-hmm. sometimes it is that simple right don't always overthink it you know and, but it's a lot right. more than that it's mm-hmm. it's every in a DS relationship, especially especially if you have brought it out of the bedroom and it's not just, okay, we're going to have this sexy moment in the dark, it everything you do goes back to whether you're consenting or not consenting. Right. I, let, let's face it. Consent on, on many different levels, regardless of lifestyle, no means no. Yes. Okay? Flat out. No means Sometimes, no. Sometimes um, schmoopsy pants means no, but no well, does mean no. Y- you know, I, I mean, you know, yes, that, that line is blurred a little bit in, in kink, but that's why they're safe words. Right. Okay. But, but you know, if, if someone says, you know, no, I don't want to have sex with you. No, I don't want to. Do, you know, no means no. And I, I would say that. I truly... Outside of a scene, outside of that moment where he's mm-hmm. got me screaming and writhing and making all kinds of noises mm-hmm. that aren't natural, mm-hmm. um, if I said, "Daddy, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do this. No, please, no, please, no," and he went ahead anyway because I didn't say red, that would be a problem because we were talking as not as equals in that sense mm-hmm. i'm always submissive he's always dominant but we were speaking this wasn't in the throes of passion where i say sometimes no daddy no no and he knows <laughs> that what i mean is yes right. please we're talking rationally you know yeah, we're absolutely we are we are not in the throes of passion in the middle of a scene where it's no. emotions raging we're having a conversation and i do think just like in vanilla sex you know if you 
if you kind of keep up with the the sex world in general, whether mm-hmm. it's kinky or not, you know, we have to to explain consent like we explain a cup of tea because there Absolutely. are people who do not get basic consent. Well, you know, I, c- consent in the 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 kink world in the BDSM world. Um, let's face it. When when I first started uh, attending munches. Okay, uh, y'all. I don't know how many of you people have been to munches. Um, I know there is there's several in the area we live. I I have been to to all of them at one point or another. Um, people in the kink world are huggers. Oh yeah. They 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 love to hug. We're a very touchy feely um, group. But you know what? Even as much as a hug, um, especially if you're not familiar with that person in the yeah, lifestyle. Yeah, you're not touching me if I don't know you. Okay. Um, they ask permission. They do. And may, you know, even if it's a submissive, may I hug you? May I give you a hug? Yes. Oh, okay. So, you know, that, that just shows you how in, in the community, consent is, is, is thought of. It should be. Okay. I mean, and, if, and it should be. Absolutely. If your community does not seem to think of it that much, maybe you need to be the one at the next munch to, if y'all do an open discussion or whatever, talk right. about consent. Right. Because, you know, here's the thing. What my Going back to what I was saying about the fact that we have to describe consent in terms of a cup of tea, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. In the vanilla world, we say, and I agree with the sentiment that even if you're like already naked and one party says, no, I don't want to do this anymore... That's that's withdrawal of consent. And I right. think that in the kink world, we can get to that point and still withdraw consent, too. I don't think that we give up those rights just because I'm submissive. I can't, you know. Absolutely not. It's just that the method may have to change. Because if right. you are at that point where it's now an emotional I mean, experience, let, let's face no it. might not sound right. like no to your now, dominant. Now, here's, here's another point that could change consent. All right? Um, you know, none of us are perfect. We, we've all had our... You know, many of us are, are a little older in life, and, and we've had our trials and tribulations. Um, when when you are seeing with somebody, when you're in a DS relationship with somebody, you're you're not only playing with their body, you you are are in their mind. Okay, because in in order to to push somebody's boundaries, to to know what they want, and and that you're playing in their head. Absolutely. Okay, and when you're doing that. Um, you know, landmines. You might stir triggers. up some crap you didn't mean to. That's for exactly. sure. Exactly. Some something may be stirred up at some point. Um, you know, trigger, boom, and and everything goes south. Okay. At that point, consent, everything stops. Can I tell you something? It may it brought to mind, and I I put it in my newsletter a few weeks ago, and I don't know if I sent you the link or not. You get my newsletter, right? You yeah. have subscribed to it. Okay. Of my, course. My daddy has subscribed to my newsletter. Anyway, <laughs> there was an article published on um, Dom Guide, the Dominant Guide, and yeah, I'll link to it, y'all, in the show notes. Don't worry. Called Silent Safe Words, where the writer talked about how safe words can't always be voiced. Voiced, correct. Not just because you've got a gag or something's going on. But because, you know, sometimes we are floating off in space somewhere. There there have been times uh, Kayla has spoken in non-English. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very nice. when, when you get to the point you're speaking in tongues, you know yeah. something very But, but right see, then again, but, too. But his something. point was, yes. <laughs> is that as a dominant, it's, it, there's a lot of responsibility on the shoulders mm-hmm. of a dominant, of a good dominant. Um, and his point was there's the silent safe words. There's the way our our body reacts or doesn't react Absolutely. it's the noises we make or don't make and so if he's in my head and he accidentally triggers something that neither of us could have anticipated, mm-hmm. he's got to be watching me. Oh, absolutely. Uh, because there, I might not even be able to say for it. There, there, there was one time I had her on the cross at the club. And it was a very intense scene. We were just... And it was great. <laughs> it's, um, it's great. Huh? She, she, she never safe worded, but I could tell by her body language what was going on with her and it was time to stop she wanted me to continue oh yeah oh, okay yeah, totally she did. she she was <laughs> like don't stop don't stop and i was like no we're ending it right now and you know what and i think that's the thing that doesn't get talked about as much he withdrew his consent to continue the scene not because i was unhappy not because he was unhappy because it was the safest thing to right. do i mean consent is so much more than a you know what i don't feel like doing this anymore that is important y'all i'm not Mm -hmm. trying to like make light of that part of consent but consent 
it, it crosses a lot of boundaries right. and it, it's not just it's not just what the submissive wants or doesn't want as much as that is important now let me give you an example of a time i had to withdraw consent and he almost didn't realize it at first so we're ha- we're just having sex no is it kinky sex of course it is oh, the, yeah if we're, ha- if oh, we're having sex it's kinky sex i'm I, <laughs> even when he tries to go vanilla oh please whatever he's pulled my hair or pinched a nipple we've gone into the, we've dipped our toe back into kink exactly. whatever yeah it doesn't, so, doesn't last long our preferred positions actually look nothing like missionary um we do missionary <laughs> fairly infrequently and only mm-hmm. when it's like rough and tumble like m- like major like animal sex and yeah. you would think animal sex would be doggy no, no. it's missionary anyway i that's all how you interpret it right <laughs> as much as i enjoy being choked and i do and i like things around my neck and throat i have a fear of not being able to breathe mm. i mean it's the thing yeah little secret i don't know how to swim why i'm not putting my face in the water it's not happening so (laughs) i'm afraid i will like i don't know what i'm afraid of but my i have a fear of not being able to breathe so he is not a like humongous man by any stretch but he put his full weight on my chest my growth was stunted by drinking too much coffee at an early age dad i'm trying to tell a story here (laughs) goodness if y'all are still with us at 40 some odd minutes bless you Yeah. yeah so he puts his full weight on me and he's just going to town and from like my waist down it feels great but he was at the exact perfect or the exact wrong angle Mm -hmm. and it knocked every bit of my breath out of me and i could not catch my breath because at that point i was also like breathing hard and panting Mm -hmm. hello monkey sex but (laughs) he did that and i started to panic i mean i literally was like a panic attack in the middle of sex but i couldn't breathe so i couldn't speak no so i start flailing because who doesn't flail when they have monkey sex yeah. it took him a minute like i was full throat yeah panic it, it, it didn't before, sink in right away before i realized that and i had, this, this was the real deal and something was wrong technically i had wanted that to stop probably a good 30 seconds before it did but for just the the a conglomeration of like a perfect storm sort of thing mm-hmm. he wasn't he couldn't see it right away and that i don't blame him for that there was no animosity it was he was he was so freaked out it was aftercare was insane that particular night but (laughs) you know there's no perfect world even with a safe word there's no perfect it comes down to the partner that you have and the trust that you place in them caca can happen at the least expected moment yes okay you know consent um I think we could pretty much say at this point, you know, just to kind of reiterate, drunk, sick, medicated. Panic attack. Panic attack. (laughs) Oh, my God. Consent cannot be given. No. Or taken. And, and, submissives, my my lovely male, female, gender fluid, submissive Mm -hmm. friends out there, it's not just your consent. It is your partner's consent. Dominants can withdraw their consent. It doesn't look necessarily the same way. No. I mean, you think, how can you withdraw your consent if you're the one making the decisions? Different side of the same coin. It's a different side of the same coin. They don't have to engage in that, or they may have to stop the play and say, we're not going to do this anymore. Whether it's for your safety Mm -hmm. or for theirs, it doesn't really matter. You know, but they can withdraw their consent too. You, you you negotiate a scene with a top, even if it's somebody that you know. Um, you know you want to be flogged. Okay, where do you want to be flogged? What can be touched? What can't be touched? And you it's know, okay to have those boundaries, y'all. right? Th- there's nothing wrong with that. That you 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 need to have those boundaries. And the and person who is not comfortable with your boundaries is not the person you, you should wanna, play with. Exactly. You know that that is all part of consent um you know it consent is important you know um, it's what makes what we do doable right i mean let let's face it you know you you we hear so much on the news um lately in the past year people having getting into a lot of deep shit um, yeah kink has been in the news a lot lately. you know and and not in a good light you know with with um non-consent look at look look at um uh oh. the actress porn actress stoya stoya oh god of okay course, stoya. i wrote an article um, about that too y- you know here she was in a a long-term relationship 
Um, you know, I, I hate to say this, um, just because you're married to somebody... They weren't even married. They were no, dating. No, I, I, I okay. know that. Okay. But, but you know, so, something that, that goes without being said, you know, you could be married. Married does not imply consent to have sex. No. Okay? Just because you're married does not mean, you know, that, that person is there to, to fulfill your sexual needs. And in All this right. case of Stoya, they were they're kinky. I mean, her and her former partner, I will not say his name. Anyway, mm -hmm. she safe worded and he still kept going. Mm -mm, right. Not okay. Not cool. No. Okay. No. So I guess I think really our final point, because we could go on and oh, yeah. on and on, <laughs> um, is that could end up being a two parter. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> our point though is that while clear yeses and clear noes are very important mm -hmm. in consent. Right. The whole idea of consent is much bigger. It deserves a lot more communication exactly. between you and whoever, whoever you're right. playing with. You, either of you, can withdraw it at any, any point. Um, and the person who cannot respect your boundaries on either side of that coin, y'all, top, bottom, doesn't matter, is not a person you need to be playing with. Because no. in order to do some of the extreme things that we do, whether you're into pain or not, because you don't have right. to be into pain, right. y'all, you, right. you still have to know <laughs> and have trust that the other person is going to do what they said they were going to do, not do right. what they said they weren't going to do, and if you need them to stop, they're going to stop. Absolutely. And it is that simple. And I think with that, we have thoroughly and ad nauseum discussed consent. consent. Are you still with us? Because if you are, you deserve God a cookie. Bless you. Oh my yeah. gosh. So. Yeah. And, you know, we have some good cookies on the dark side. Yes, we do. <laughs> Come to the dark side. We have cookies. We do anyway. have cookies. Okay, so that is it for us this yep. week. Um, Thank there's, you all. There's a chance in the next coming weeks, because I got a really good email from um, a fellow Kingster. I don't know if she listens to the show or if she just reads the blog, but we've connected in a couple mm -hmm. of ways mm -hmm. um, about communicate. Or it, her question to me caused me to send her basically a book, a, <laughs> a novel length reply about communication. And so there's a possibility in the next few weeks you'll hear both of us together right. again talking about communication. And, 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 and you know, um, I just want to say real quick I, I know another reader um, approached Kayla. Um, wanting me to discuss yes. um, ab about being a daddy dom and the, the differences between a do normal dom. Um, I, normal dom. Or, or you daddy doms, you're not normal. <laughs> we already knew that, though. Okay, a dom dom. <laughs> a dom. <laughs> Is that different from a domly dom? We have no. That's not. We've no, like gone two, off the rails. Here. Yeah, we've gone off the we've rails. Gone off the rails. So anyway, I, I I have that, and and I will be talking about that as well. It's not forgotten. Yeah. Um, and which being, being the technical advisor sometimes takes up a lot of my time. What? But taking care of a baby girl takes time. What? Yeah, well, there you go. There's one big difference. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Um, just so you know, as you can tell, if you send us topic suggestions, we do take those seriously. If you Absolutely. send us questions that trigger a thought, we take that seriously and Absolutely. we will talk about it. So yes. if there's something on your mind that they have has it's come up or not away. right send it to us we're good yeah. okay y'all keep it kinky and we'll see you next week